This is me. I'm a professional stop motion animator and in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to create your own amazing Lego brick films with no experience and no expensive equipment necessary. Hey there, I'm Adam, AKA Ant Bandit, and welcome to this tutorial video where I'm gonna be teaching you the basics of stop motion animation. If you're new here, a little bit about myself. I'm a freelance animator who's created official content for brands like DC, Warner Brothers, Barnes and Noble, and and of course, Lego. Now I wasn't always this good at animation. So here's a look at the very first thing that I ever animated as a kid. Hopefully that shows you that everybody starts from somewhere and you definitely don't need to be good at this starting out. I know I wasn't, you don't need a nice camera and you don't even need to be a good Lego builder to enjoy doing this. I'll be taking you through step-by-step step how to get started with the basics of stop motion animation using affordable or free stuff that you probably have laying around in your house right now. Now, if you're looking for more advanced tutorials about lighting, improving your set design or brick filming in general, don't worry, we will be getting to those in future videos. I want this one to be a good jumping on point for you beginners, so that way you can get started doing this yourself. Before we go any further, let's first define stop motion animation. Essentially, stop motion is a sequence of images or frames that when played together quickly, create the illusion of motion. Creating an animation is as simple as taking a picture of your scene, moving your character or subject slightly, taking another picture, moving your character again, taking another picture, and and so on and so on. Let's get going with a couple things that you'll need to get started. First, you'll need a clean and at least somewhat stable work area, like a table or a desk, something that's not gonna shift around or move too much if you bump into it. Next, you'll need a consistent light source. Something like your common desk lamp that you might have around your house works perfectly for this, and set up two or three to properly light your work area. Then we need a camera. We're gonna be using the one that you already have in your pocket, your smartphone. And really any smartphone will work for this. Doesn't matter if it's an iPhone or an Android, as long as it has a functioning camera, you're good to go. You'll also need something to securely mount your smartphone in one place, something like a tripod or a phone support rig of some type. You can even build your own out of Lego bricks if you wanna do it cheaply. Basically something that will hold your phone in one spot without it moving. You can use things like tape or sticky tack to make sure your camera is firmly locked in place. Finally, the last thing you'll need is to download a free app called Stop Motion Studio. It's available on Android and iPhone, and there are a bunch of different apps out there that you can try. This one just happens to be my favorite. It's got a bunch of good features, and it's not too complicated to learn. There is an upgraded version that you can pay for, but we're gonna stick to the free version because it really has everything that we need to get started. Once you have the app downloaded, you'll wanna open it up and adjust a few easy settings. First, tap New Movie to open up a new project, and then the gear icon in the lower left to open up some settings. Here in your speed controls, you'll choose the FPS or frames per second that you want to animate at. Essentially, FPS is the amount of pictures that you need to take to create one second of animation. While there is no correct FPS to choose from, there are a few widely recognized standards. And as a beginner, I'd recommend trying a few to get a hang of what FPS you like to animate at. Starting out, I'd suggest trying eight FPS, 12 FPS, or one of the most common, 15 FPS, which I'll be using for the rest of this tutorial. 15 FPS is my preferred setting and is definitely very accessible for beginners. Once you've chosen your speed, tap the camera icon in the upper right to open up your animation window. From here, you can access all of your camera settings by pressing the button in the bottom right. You'll want to change your camera from auto mode into M for manual mode. This will give you full control of your camera settings and make it so that it's not constantly adjusting focus and exposure while you're animating. You should also take your camera off of auto white balance. That way that setting is staying consistent between every frame. Before you start animating, there's one major thing that you need to keep in mind when you're setting up your scene. Because you're creating a series of images, you want everything from the camera position to the lighting to remain as consistent as possible in every picture you take. You'll wanna try to avoid having things like jittery camera movement or light flicker show up in your final animation. Thankfully, there are some easy ways to prevent things like this. Number one, just making sure that your camera is really locked into place and being mentally aware that you're not gonna bump into 
into it or touch it in a way that's gonna move it around too much. Next, we have Light Flicker. To prevent something like this showing up in your animation, you'll want to turn off all the overhead lighting, lamps, any source of light that you have turned on in your room, along with blocking off any natural source of light coming through windows. Because the position and direction of sunlight will change throughout the day, we want to close off any blinds to make sure that all of our lighting stays consistent. Another contributor to light flicker that you want to avoid would be shadows or reflections that you create with your own body. Make sure to be aware of any major shadows that you're casting onto your scene and try to avoid putting your body or your hands between your set that you're photographing and any source of light that's shining directly onto it. All right, now that we've got all that set up, let's get ready to animate. For our set, we're keeping it simple with a plain Lego base plate on the table and just one minifigure to practice some basic movements. Make sure that whatever set or base plate you choose to animate on, that it's securely fastened to your table so that it doesn't move around between shots. I prefer to use small strips of gaffer's tape attached to each corner of my base plate, but you can use anything from scotch tape, duct tape, sticky tack, anything that will hold it firmly in place. Now let's frame up our shot. Generally, I like to keep the camera at eye level height with the minifigures. That way you're not looking down at them from above or up at them from a low angle. Next, let's double check our focus settings to make sure that our subject is looking crisp and sharp in focus. Let's start with a simple movement by having the minifigure raise their hand and wave at the camera. First, take a picture of your minifig standing in a neutral position with their arms at their side. Then raise their arm slightly and take another picture. Repeat this process until their arm is all the way raised up and then repeat it again as you lower their arm down until it's back at their side. Press the play button to watch it back and there we go, we have a wave but we can make this look even better. Let's do the same thing again, but use something called ease in and ease out. This will make your movements look much smoother and more natural. Essentially, ease in and ease out means that every action should begin slowly before becoming quicker and then slow down again at the very end of the movement. Start with a picture of your minifig in that neutral position with their arms at their side, then raise their hand just a tiny amount for that second frame. For the next picture, raise their hand a small amount, but just a little bit more than the last frame. Continue raising the arm in increasingly larger increments as you go along through the movement, right up until you get to the top of the wave where you want to go back to slowing it down with smaller and smaller movements in between frames. Once the hand gets to the top of the wave, reverse the process and do the same thing as you lower the arm back down. As you can see, this looks so much smoother than before, and the more you practice easing in and easing out, the better your animation will look. You can also practice adding things like anticipation to your movements. Having your character bend down slightly and then bend back up and spring into that wave will add a lot of character and life to that animation. Before we move on to learning how to make your minifigure walk, here's a good tip to keep in mind when you're animating on a smartphone. Like we said before, we wanna avoid bumping or moving it out of place between shots, so make sure to use really light finger pressure when you're tapping that capture button. However, if you wanna avoid touching your phone entirely, you can grab a pair of USB headphones or earbuds, plug them in, and use the volume button to trigger your phone to take a picture. That way, you don't have to touch your phone or worry about moving it out of place in any way. Next, let's learn how to do a basic minifig walk cycle. Every walk cycle consists of a few key poses that you'll repeat over and over again to achieve your walking animation. The one I'll show you today has a total of five individual poses. Pose number one, start your minifigure with their arms at their side and their feet together in a neutral position and take your first frame. Pose number two, keeping them in the same place, raise their left leg up slightly, move their left arm back and their right arm slightly forward. Pose number three is the trickiest. Move your minifigure forward, balancing their feet between the two studs. Feel free to use a small amount of sticky tack underneath the minifigure's feet to hold them up here if you need it and move their right arm forward a bit and their left arm back slightly again. Pose number four. I call this the landing position because you're landing that foot on the next stud in front of the minifig. Swing both arms down closer towards the center of the torso. Pose number five is identical to pose number one. So both arms at the sides and both feet together. And there we go. You've completed one full step and you're back where you started at the beginning of the cycle. To continue this walk, you'll want to repeat the same poses again, but this time lead with the opposite foot and swing the arms in the opposite direction. Make sure that the direction that your arms are swinging is opposite from the leg that's stepping forward. So if the right leg is stepping forward, then the left arm is swinging forward and the right arm is swinging back and vice versa for the other foot. 
One of the biggest things to keep in mind when you're trying to improve your stop motion is to just remember that the more time you spend doing it, the better it will look. Stop motion is a physical art medium. It requires really precise control over your hands and fingers. When you're trying to learn just the right amount of tension or pressure to move these tiny figures in really exact increments, that can take a lot of practice to develop. But don't get discouraged if your early animations don't look exactly the way you want them to. I promise you, the more you spend time practicing, the better it will look. If you're just starting out, I'd also recommend not being too overly ambitious with your ideas for animations. I wouldn't immediately jump into recreating the entire movie of Deadpool in Lego. Yes, somebody did do that already and it's amazing, but if you're new, I'd stick to some animation tests, doing some walk cycles, some basic character movements, and really practicing those first before you move on to some larger projects. If you have questions or comments for me, leave them down below and I'm always happy to answer as many as I can. I'd love to know what you want to learn about in our next tutorial video, whether it's lighting, gear, uh, studio setup, anything at all, feel free to let me know in the comments. If you end up using this tutorial to try making your own animation, please post it on Instagram, share it with me. I would love to see what you're working on. That's about it for this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more Lego content like this. Once again, I'm Adam. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.